Hi, welcome back to Storyline, in this video we will summarize one of the films entitled Carl and Bertha which was released in 2011. Prepare your snack, set a comfortable position, and let's get into the storyline of the film. In 1870 in the city of Pforzheim, there were two men named Carl Benz and August Ritter visiting a party at the house of a skipper. In the area they are planning to host Mr. Manstead was amazed by the submissions they were about to present. Carl Benz showed an engine design which he projected as a revolutionary means of transportation with a method of motion that is no longer pulled by animals but driven by a machine. The project will consist of two phases. The first is the construction of the engine and the second is the design of the structure that will become the body of the car. But the presentation made Mr. Manstead was confused as to what the machine was made for because the availability of horses was very abundant and he asked what was the advantage of the machine. Carl then said the reason is because horses for some people are not affordable and it is very risky to travel long distances because horses will get tired if the horse has to pull a heavy load. On the other hand in the party, a couple is experiencing a heart controversy. They were betrothed by their families. This man named Wilhelm who was the son of Mr. Manstead who really wanted to marry a woman named Bertha. But Bertha didn't love Wilhelm even though he was a handsome man from a rich and respectable family. But Bertha was still forced by her parents and asked to obey orders. Bertha then gets annoyed and leaves. In Mr. Manstead, apparently he wasn't very interested in Carl's presentation. He just wants to give capital to an invention if the product is really useful. It made Carl offended to hear Mr. Manstead. Carl then said Mr. Manstead is a man who lacks vision and imagination. Carl then went out to cool off on the balcony and there he met Bertha who was also calming down. They finally met and chatted. Bertha then spoke a little about her grief and Carl showed his a design drawing of a product that would allow everyone to own a vehicle. Bertha was very impressed to hear Carl's vision even though Carl still couldn't realize his dream before he managed to get capital from investors. During the conversation, Bertha's father came and pulled his daughter back into the party room. Bertha who met Carl was inspired to be involved in changing times. Then she got Wilhelm to talk and Bertha told her honestly that she had no desire to marry him. Bertha then goes and runs into Carl. Carl offers her to dance and Bertha accepts the offer. They danced in front of Wilhelm. This made Bertha's parents angry because they had wasted the opportunity to be married to a fellow rich person. But Bertha still doesn't want to obey her parents' wishes. S. He prefers to continue her education again than marry someone she does not love. And Bertha values achievement more than just living in comfort. One day Carl came asking to meet with Bertha but he was forbidden by Bertha's father. A few days later, suddenly Bertha came to Carl's workshop. S. He apologized for what her father had done to Carl. Besides, Bertha later admitted that she couldn't stop thinking about Carl about his plans and inventions. Carl then tried to explain again all the draft drawings of his invention and Bertha was increasingly interested in Carl who was considered innovative and imaginative. Since then, they had a relationship that Bertha kept secret from her parents. They often meet at the park. Long story short, because it has been a long time not getting a program, finally August Ritter decided to quit. And he said that a vehicle without a horse is just a fantasy. But Carl said that he would still make his dream come true and would never stop trying. Carl then told Bertha that he was still confused about the source of the capital he wanted to get. But he will keep trying to stay out of debt. Carl also said if he could not give certainty when he could marry Bertha. Hearing her lover's problem, Bertha finally talked about it to her father. Bertha then says if there is a brilliant mechanic who is trying to change the times. Bertha asked her father to be an investor in Carl's invention. Bertha's father wants to help her because he loves Bertha very much. But because the amount of capital required is quite large, Bertha's father doesn't want to risk something he doesn't understand. Bertha then made another offer. She asked her father to disperse the wedding expenses that would be given to her to be used as capital as an investor. Bertha's father was of course shocked, but he gave a solution if Bertha was sure that the money would be dispersed, Bertha should immediately marry Carl. Bertha then talked about it to Carl. Carl who heard that, although he was happy to get capital from Bertha's father, but he also felt stressed because his growth was quite risky. And in the end they got married. Carl promised to immediately complete the prototype of his creation. But Carl's in-laws don't care what kind of business Carl has, because they are more concerned with Bertha who can live happily with the man she loves. Nine years later in 1879 in the city of Mannheim, the Benz family was blessed with three children. But Carl was still not able to complete his discovery. They still live simply with the kitchen of the house adjoining the workshop. Carl is still trying to pursue his dream and Bertha still believes in her husband's dream. She is even willing to ask her father for more money to make her husband's dream come true. But Carl turned it down because he was ashamed of Bertha's family. In fact, their life is quite simple and difficult to the point that they do not have money just to buy vegetables. Nevertheless, Bertha did not complain. She still provides food that can be provided with her husband's income. One day, Carl had a guest named Emil Buller who wanted to take the camera plate that Carl had repaired. Emil Buller then entered the workshop. 
There he saw a drawing of Carl's car design. Emil Buhler curious to see the news of this strange product. Bertha helped explain that it was an engine-powered vehicle design. Carl will use gas as fuel for the engine. Emil Buhler was immediately attracted and he immediately agreed to become an investor. With enthusiasm, Carl then finished the draft drawing and he started to produce spare part after spare part and Bertha also helped her husband. Time after time Carl was busy working on his own project until he felt tired and Carl injured his hand. In the evening at an event where Carl was introduced to investors by Emil Buhler. There Emil Buhler has given confidence to Carl's invention to all investors, that Carl's machine will be finished soon. This forced Carl to immediately complete his discovery so that Carl did not have time to rest. With his hand injured, he chased after the target so that he was even more exhausted. Due to lack of rest, Bertha asked Carl not to push himself too much. But Carl won't stop. Carl didn't want anyone to get ahead of him. He felt that he was not the only one who thought of the invention of this machine. For that he must be able to be the first to make a vehicle engine. Christmas had arrived and Bertha and her children went home to their parents. But Carl stayed home alone to finish the machine. Bertha, who has not been home for a long time, then meets Wilhelm who is now married to Karina, who is his close friend. They look healthy and prosperous unlike Bertha. Bertha's father who saw the condition of her daughter asked Bertha to forget her husband. Carl is considered to have abandoned Bertha and does not want to help her husband anymore. Bertha tried to stay patient with all the insults from her father. A few days later, they returned home. While Bertha was putting her child to bed, Bertha didn't see Carl. And it turned out that Carl was still in the garage trying to start the engine late into the night. Carl's condition was exhausted. Carl's health began to be disturbed. Bertha begged her husband to rest. Carl desperately wants his dream to come true. Bertha said she didn't want to lose Carl. But Carl didn't hear what his wife said. He kept trying to start the engine. He tried several times and finally the engine started to run and move. Bertha was very happy and couldn't help but feel touched after the long struggle they had gone through. The machine then began to be seriously produced. Carl starts recruiting mechanics. Seeing this development, Emil Buhler began to be ambitious. He plans to bring their product into mass production. For that he will try to hook some other young men to become investors and develop his company into a public and public company named Gas and Motor Fabric Monheim in 1882. One day Carl was summoned before the stakeholders in his company. They questioned the engine produced by Carl Benz. It turns out that another engine manufacturer on behalf of Gottlieb Daimler under the direction of Nicholas Otto, has made a claim that Carl Benz has violated their engine patents. Carl Benz didn't know about the two people even though they were from the same region in southern Germany. He only produces what he thinks. Daimler's side has demanded that they pay as much as 37,000 gold. Carl was asked to give up all of his shares and step down to become an employee only if their production was to continue. Here Carl realized that he had made a mistake because he didn't patent his new development engine. Seeing all his responsibilities to support his family and employees, Carl would accept the offer and forego the rights to his creation. But Bertha prefers to start from scratch again than her husband having to sacrifice his life's work. She didn't care if they had to go back to living hard. Because he believed that one day their dreams would come true. Therefore Carl then met Emil and submitted his resignation letter from the company. The next day he was forced to lay off his employees. But luckily no demo took place. They all understand and even support Carl so that one day he rises again and hires them again. The bitter situation was compounded by the sad news where the Benz family received a telegram from Pforzheim informing them that Bertha's father had died. Bertha, who was pregnant with her fourth child, immediately fell limp in the yard. They then traveled to Pforzheim to attend Bertha's father's funeral. S. He was very sad. She didn't even want to be touched by her husband. After that incident Bertha had no zest for life. So in an effort to revive his wife's enthusiasm, Carl started looking for investors again. Carl goes to Max Casper Rose and Ferrar Schneise who are bicycle shop entrepreneurs. Carl said his intention was to build a gas engine. Those who have heard of Carl's profile as a skilled mechanic, they don't want to hear his presentation which they predict will be very boring. They then challenged Carl to bowling. If Carl can do strike then they will agree to the cooperation proposal. And luckily Carl managed to strike. They then agreed to Carl's proposal and created a company. Initially they only produced factory engines that run on gas. But with the inspiration of the bicycles in his shop, Carl then proposed to make a car that was inspired by the workings of bicycle mechanics. In 1885, Carl succeeded in making his creation, which was named the Benz Patent Motorwagen. And the following year he managed to get a patent for his creation in the category of full by gas automobile a creation of the first car that is similar to a pedicab but without a hood and is driven by a motor. Carl begins to test drive in public. Carl drove the car around the city streets. Everyone was so mesmerized when the car could go. Although the townspeople still find it strange to see the product. But Carl proudly drove it. 
but it turned out that the engine development version that year was still not strong enough to withstand the heat. The car engine exploded in front of the market. Carl became the object of ridicule by local residents. Carl then brought the machine back to the workshop. While Carl was disappointed, Bertha was happy that they could see the bright side of things. Although it is still not perfect, but at least they can prove to everyone that the dream of a motorized vehicle has become a reality and not a fantasy. Bertha then said that if Carl had to continue to present it to the public that his creations could work. Carl was tired and already felt that their hard work was in vain, especially with the fact that now he was forbidden by the police to retest the machine on the city streets. Bertha still insists that Carl does not stop because one day someone else will create it first if Carl does not want to continue his invention. But in that conversation, Carl's son named Eugene Benz began to be influenced by the chatter of people around him. Yesterday's incident had now made him the subject of ridicule. He forced his father to stop dreaming. In the evening when conditions had calmed down, Eugene Benz approached his father and apologized for what had happened that afternoon. Carl certainly understands and explains how his car engine works. Carl said that one day Eugene Benz would become one of the first generation of race car drivers in the world. Carl Benz improved his car engine and began marketing the car in 1888 to become the first car to hit the market. They were selling at a tech expo and this Benz car was surprisingly difficult to attract buyers' attention. The duo of Max Casper Rose and Ferrar Schneiser then concluded that Carl's innovation was a failure. They then withdrew from their partnership with Carl. On a rainy night, Carl comes home from the expo and is greeted by Bertha with good wishes. But Bertha was met with a frustrated scream from her husband. Carl stated that this was enough. There will be no investors who will cooperate with Carl. Bertha continues to encourage Carl to continue developing his inventions. But at that time Carl felt very tired with his discovery and already felt he had no more energy to go back to repeating everything. And Carl chose to give up. The next day on August 5, 1888, Carl woke up and found a letter on his desk. The letter was from Bertha giving the news that she was going with Eugene and Richard to visit her mother in Pforzheim. Carl is then startled by the screams of a mechanic named Joseph from outside the house. Joseph panicked when he looked into the repair shop their car was gone. Carl at that time still didn't know who took the car. And that's when he arrived by a colleague of his first time when they created a gas motor company and factory in 1882. Then Carl would sell his engine products to that person. Carl did not realize that at that time his car product was being carried by Bertha accompanied by their two sons. Bertha wanted to test drive the car for a long journey. The distance from Monheim to Pforzheim is about 106 kilometers. Bertha thought that a good machine had to undergo a series of tests in order to be declared a true production and work. At one location the car began to run out of gas, while they have no spare material. Precisely in the village of Wieslach, there Bertha went to a pharmacy and bought Ligroin, a type of chemical solvent to replace gasoline as fuel. Eugene then tried to fill the car's carburetor with a solution. And after being tested the engine then started and the pharmacy was later declared the world's first fuel shop. They then continued their journey, and at another point, the car broke down and the lining material for the hose leading to the carburetor was melted from the heat. The incident was laughed at by the horse-drawn carriage. Bertha provides a real solution. She removed the straps of the stockings to use as a tie-in for the hose and the car finally restarted and left the horse-drawn carriage behind. The next obstacle is the incline. The car engine that still uses gear 2 is apparently unable to pull three passengers up the hill. Eugene and Richard couldn't afford to push the car all the way to the top. They then enlisted the help of local farmers to push the car. And finally the car can be brought to the top. The various obstacles that Bertha found along the way eventually became the material for their further car development. Bertha also found a problem with the wooden brakes so Bertha had to pull over to a horse repair shop to attach rubber to the brakes and created the world's first brake pedal. In Monheim, Carl is approached by potential buyers. Carl has been given a letter of agreement to sell his car engine patent. However, when Carl asked about future plans for this creation, the prospective buyer did not provide a clear explanation. Carl became hesitant to hand over his creation to parties who did not have a definite purpose. In the end, Carl did not sell the engine patent and intends to keep it. On the other hand, Bertha and her son finally arrived in Pforzheim when it was getting dark. The trip took about 12 hours 50 minutes. Bertha Benz was later declared the first driver in the world to travel such a long route. Bertha's route to Pforzheim was later remembered as the Bertha Benz Memorial Route. Bertha immediately sent a telegram to Carl to inform them that they had arrived in Pforzheim in their car safely. Carl then felt happy and hugged his partner. Carl's dream has now come true. In 1889 a car model with three gears was introduced in Paris. Their Benz car started getting some orders. In 1926 the Best & Sons company merged with Daimler Motor & Gesellschaft to further strengthen the position of these two companies and then merged under the Deller-Benz company and produced cars with a brand called Mercedes-Benz. 
The name Mercedes is a tribute to his son Emil Jelinek who is an entrepreneur at the Daimler Motor and Gesellschaft company. Carl Benz died after completing the company's merger process. Thank you for those of you who have watched to the end. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See you in the next video.